this morning we'll really be trying to give you some an overview of our different top, um, graduate courses and insights into our dynamic range of courses that we have on offer at the moment with the inputs from both our program directors, um, our current student Maeve and also recent graduate Manzi. Um, I suppose first and foremost, I think it's really important to highlight, you know, we're a very diverse, a very unique school in terms of our three core subject areas of social policy, social work and social justice. Um, we're also delighted that um, our, our our, our social policy course has been ranked in the top 100 in social policy and administration. And I think this very much reflects the high standards um, and the research activity of our staff. I think, again, important to mention that we're a very international school. We're a very diverse school in terms of both our staff cohort and our student cohort. Um, and again, you know, a very research intensive school um, with, I suppose, lots of our research having impact on both policy and practice. I think our school is also very unique in terms of having a professional program, as well as our variety of taught um, masters that we'll be talking to you about this morning. So look, we hope you find the session helpful, informative, really the idea is to give you some insights and a better understanding of what the courses can offer, but also some of the careers kind of post-graduating from these courses. So we're going to kick off with Associate Professor Marini Rattley, who's going to talk to you about our professional masters in social work program. So over to you, Marin. Thanks very much, Sarah, um, and welcome everyone. Uh, great to be here today. Um, so I'm going to speak to you about our UCD Professional Master of Social Work program. So this is a two-year full-time professional social work program. It's approved by CORU, which regulates uh, social work in Ireland, but the qualification is also recognised in many other countries. So in other countries, if you're from another country or you're thinking of practising in another country after you qualify, the qualification is often recognised in other countries. You have to generally go through the regulation processes there. Um, it combines academic modules and practice placements. So this is a key feature of the programme where you do two placements during the duration of the programme, and we'll speak about that in a little bit, a little bit more um, in a minute. We have very strong partnerships with agencies ac across the country um, uh, and practitioners, so social work experienced social work practitioners and service users contribute to many of our modules, which is a key and important feature of the programme. The, the programme, the Masters in Social Work, leads to a generic qualification in social work. So this equips graduates to practice in a range of settings. And I'll say a little bit more in a moment about the different career options that are available. We pride ourselves on having a very diverse student cohort, diverse in, in, in terms of different um, factors. So for example, students from different countries, students of different ethnicities, students of different ages. So recent graduates from degrees or people who are returning to education and people from different socioeconomic backgrounds, people of different, um, to people who have disabilities also. So we have very diverse um, student cohort and students really learn from each other, I think, because of that diversity. So just in terms of the programme structure, to give you a sense of it, as I said, it's a two-year full-time programme. It has 150 credits. In the first year of the programme, you're on campus um, for the first trimester, so the autumn trimester. In the second trimester, you're primarily on placement. So this is a 14-week placement, full-time placement in a social work agency um, in Ireland uh, that takes place in the second trimester. And then in the third trimester, the summer of uh, year one, you complete a dissertation. And then in second year, the program takes uh, uh, it has a similar structure. So, for example, in the first trimester, you're on campus again doing academic modules and preparing you for your second year placement, which again happens in the um, spring trimester. Again, this is a 14 week placement. This would happen in a different agency to the one that you uh, did your first placement in. Um, this is a, an example of some of the modules that we have on the program. So we have modules on topics such as law, um, a module in both first and second year on counselling skills and first and second year on adult services and health. We have a module on theories of human development and behaviour for social work, child welfare and protection, again, in both first and second year, a social work methods module in first and second year. We have research uh, methods mo uh, module, including a dissertation, preparation for professional practice module, a module that focuses on social justice and human rights, one that focuses 
on group work and community work. And then, as I said, the placement modules, which are a really key component in the second trimester. And um, we have a mix of large lectures and also smaller group teaching. So, for example, in particular, in our counselling skills, in our methods and in our group work and community work module, we would divide students into smaller groups, um, which gives people a really good opportunity to get to know each other and learn from each other. In terms of thinking about careers in social work, uh, there's really great demand for social workers in a variety of sectors, both nationally here in Ireland and internationally. Our graduates gener generally have a choice of different employers that they that may wish to apply for um, positions in, and they're really sought after. So, for example, the diverse settings would include medical social work uh, settings, so working in hospitals, for example, criminal justice settings such as probation service and working in prisons, or working with young offenders, adult and child mental health teams, child welfare and protection teams, physical and intellectual disability services. We've uh, social workers working in older people services and community development settings. And um, some of our graduates are working in adoption services or enforced migration services, working with refugees. Local authority housing services also employ social workers, as do substance uh, misuse services. Um, increasingly, our graduates are working in adult safeguarding teams, and also social workers work in occupational social work. So, for example, social workers within the defence forces. So, as you can see, there's a huge variety. There's a tendency to equate um, social work with child welfare and protection as uh, social work, but many of our graduates and many of our graduates do, of course, work in child protection and welfare, but also there's a range of other types of uh, careers that people can, can work in. So briefly then, just on eligibility. Um, so in order to be eligible for this program, you need to have relevant practice experience of 420 hours. Um, you need to have an overall grade of a 2-2 in a program that includes social policy as a major component. It's important to mention this, so if you're, if you're reading that and thinking you don't have social policy, we also have a one-year higher diploma in social policy here in UCD, um, which would, uh, so for example, if you had a background in something like engineering and you wish to convert and come into social work, you could do that higher diploma before coming onto the program and that would make you eligible. Um, I'm available for any questions. You can put them into the Q&A. Also, if you want to email me afterwards, um, that's my email address there. You can also find it on the UCD website if, in case you don't get a chance to, to, to note it down. So thanks very much, everyone. Happy to answer any questions that you might have. So next up, we have Dr. Stefan Coppa, who is the director of the Masters in Public Policy. So Stefan is going to give us an overview of that programme and his presentation is going to be complemented and followed by a recent graduate, um, Manzi. Rawat. So over to you, Stefan. Uh, thanks, Sarah, for the introduction. So uh, I'm presenting here the Master of Public Policy, and this is for careers if you really want to change public policies for the better. So if you work in the civil service, uh, in public administration, in a nonprofit organization, but also if you're, you know, an advocate for policy change in um, yeah, a, a kind of private company. And we uh, give you all this in a, our primary degree as a master, but we also have different pathways into the program, including a PhD option. How we uh, think what really distincts, uh, you know, our MPP program from others is that we are interdisciplinary, global and applied. What do we mean by this? So, first of all, we really give you the applied background in all the core subjects of public policy. So data and methods for policy research and analysis so that you can really analyze policy developments uh, um, uh, at your place of work. Uh, then public administration, giving you the background into the basics of how public administration works in different uh, contexts of uh, government. Then uh, we talk about uh, evidence-based policy making, how evidence is actually influencing policies, and we provide a comparative public policy module as well. So this is the core of our program, and then we provide streams where you specialize in welfare issues, health policies, uh, economics, including behavioral economics. We have a, a very popular uh, environmental policy stream where we learn about you know, energy policy and so forth. We have a stream on uh, European politics. So how is uh, our intergovernmental uh, organizations like the EU shaping policy processes on the national level, so this multi-level governance uh, aspects. We talk about regulations on how actually rules change 
behavior, not just uh, uh, you know financial incentives. And we have urban stream where you learn about spatial uh, dimensions and uh, housing, for instance. Uh, a really big issue in a lot of countries at the moment. We also provide a research stream uh, where you can specialize in particular research methods. So that's kind of the package uh, and how it prepares you for your future career in uh, you know, public policy. Uh, in addition, we have then the option between a thesis and an internship. And the internship option is really popular recently. And we have a number of partners, both in government and uh, the nonprofit sector, where we have already a long list of uh, providers like uh, Social Justice Ireland, uh, the IPA, as I said, some government agencies. And uh, we have so many partners, we actually can't fill the uh, places at the moment because we don't have, uh, um, we, we, it wasn't that popular uh, last year or uh, this year. We, we have sufficient places for internships. Uh, you, we also facilitate international internships if you kind of want to go back to your home country for the internship. As I said, we have a full-time master one year, part-time two years, but that's only for domestic or EU students. Uh, as a more general background, uh, we have a kind of like excellent student experience and employment opportunities. Here you see the ranking uh, that Sarah already mentioned. We also had been ranked uh, in the um, EDU Universal ranking uh, as one of the top uh, programs in Western Europe. Uh, we provide a 30% scholarship for um, future women leaders. So where we really want to change that there are more female leaders in key government positions. And that also provides some additional, uh, beside the scholarship, it also provides extra courses on uh, leadership. We are a friendly international network. We always have one international speaker per academic term. Uh, that speaks to uh, our current students and uh, provides really this international uh, outreach uh, for your future career. Also recently, this is now from 2021, the pie chart, we have very high employability. Every, all our, of our students have very good prospects. Uh, also the internship uh, is a good springboard for a future career. Uh, I think I end with that uh, short and brief uh, overview. Uh, if you have any questions, go to our website. It's uh, ucd.ie forward slash public policy. And if you have any questions, the best way to contact us is drop us an email at mpp at ucd.ie, and then we will take care of it. But also my co-director, Matthew Donoghue, and I can, of course, answer questions. Thank you very much. And uh, now uh, I hand over to Manzi Rawat. It was really a pleasure to work with her last year. She is our recent graduate uh, from uh, this year. In uh, August, she graduated, and uh, we worked together on a paper. So these are also opportunities we offer. And um, uh, she kind of uh, has found a job at uh, Social Justice Ireland and will probably talk about her career experience. Oh, thank you for the kind introduction, Stefan. Good afternoon, everyone. And I am delighted to have the opportunity to share my experience as a Master of Public Policy student at UCD, as well as, you know, my experiences in navigating the Irish labor market. Uh, so uh, I would start by sharing why I chose to do Master of Public Policy and uh, why I decided to pursue it uh, in UCD and how it shaped, shaped my career path. Uh, so my journey to the public policy domain began during my tenure as a communications professional in India. Uh, I was working for Government of India back then. And over time, I transi transitioned towards project implementation, where I not only discovered the passion for addressing societal issues and driving meaningful change, but also, you know, got exposed to the intricacies of project management, monitoring and evaluation. I came to realize that, uh, you know, policy making plays a very crucial role in shaping these projects and making informed decisions during the planning stages. And this realization kind of uh, further fueled my passion for public policy and its transformative potential. So pursuing MPP seemed like a natural step as it would uh, not only allow me to delve deeper into policy analysis, but it would also equip me with the skills necessary to drive meaningful change through evidence-based decision-making. 
and collaborative efforts. Uh, so my experience at UCD has been incredibly rewarding because I took the time to thoroughly review the course modules and structure it, I mean, and the structure to ensure that they aligned with my needs, interests, and my future goals. And this is something that I would also recommend to all the prospective students who are considering to study this master's program at UCD, because I feel like each of our journey is like unique and it is essential that we choose you know, uh, the modules uh, that best suits our aspirations. And this can be done by, you know, carefully examining UCD's curriculum. And uh, as Stefan shared, you can, you know, also reach out to all the professors. They're really kind, they're very helpful. And I think this would help you in making an informed decision that sets you on the path to success. Uh, when deciding to pursue my master of public policy degree, you know, there were several factors that drew me to UCD. As Tara mentioned earlier, first and foremost was UCD's esteemed reputation in academia, particularly in the field of public policy in Ireland and across Europe. So the university's strong emphasis on research, especially quantitative research methodologies and practical application was very appealing to me. Uh, uh, and I uh, felt that it these other things that equipped me with both theoretical knowledge as well as you know real world real world skills. Uh, additionally, you know Dublin is a vibrant place with diverse culture, and studying over here was you know an enticing prospect. And you know the cherry on top of that was being granted a thirty percent scholarship. So this made UCD even more attractive choice for me. My experience at UCD has been, like, as I earlier shared, it has been really good. Uh, not, uh, not only because of these things, but also because, you know, of the comprehensive curriculum that UCD has. It covers, like, a wide array of topics essential to understanding the intricacies of public policy. From quantitative policy analysis to evidence-based policy making, you know, the program modules were designed to offer a holistic perspective on the field, as well and the academic staff at UCD were not only experts in their respective fields, but were also, you know, incredibly supportive mentors. And I've been working with Stefan, Mihal has been really supportive. I mean, all the professors have been really supportive at the time, you know, when you want their guidance. So they do they do they do play a very pivotal role in shaping uh, and they have played a very pivotal role in shaping my academic journey as well as my professional journey uh one of the standout features of my time at UC ucd was the emphasis on practical learning experiences through lectures from experts and collaborative projects you know we have multiple lectures from experts in the field who would be government officials or who would be working in you know think tanks ngos and i have gained like valuable insights into the real world policy challenges and solutions through attending these kind of lectures and conferences and UCD provides all those so like i feel that these opportunities not only reinforce classroom learning but also on my analytical and problem solving skills preparing me for the demands of the workforce uh UCD also supports you know graduate students in different ways we we have access to academic resources to career guidance services. So, you know, uh, UCD provides, provides us with a conducive environment for personal and professional growth. Um, additionally, you know, in, in the university, uh, you can foster connections uh, between, uh, the university also helps in fostering connections between students and potential employer, employers through, you know, their uh, career camps, as well as the I mean, my, uh, the professors keep on sharing part-time job opportunities, so it's like really good that way. I feel like these kind of things have played a really important role in shaping my career journey over here because, you know, the university provided numerous avenues for me to engage with the labor market by providing platforms for networking, such as career camps, ho hosting conferences with the experts, hosting lectures by the experts, as well as by sharing part-time job opportunities. 
because you know thanks to this i would say thanks to the support of my professors and thanks to everybody at ucd i was able to secure a part time position with social justice ireland while i was pursuing my masters and which eventually led to a full time role post graduation so and i feel like my masters degree uh, especially you know the modules that i chose equipped me with those necessary skills that i needed to get that the current role that i have so um i would just say i i highly recommend this course and i hope you all also have the sim a similar experience that i have and thank you so much okay and no thank you so much manzi for fantastic i suppose for your honesty and for sharing your motivations your experiences in ucd i mean it's lovely to hear that you felt so supportive both from the course staff in the school but also the wider university um but also i suppose those really important um supports and information and engagement around future career opportunities as well as as you say you know kind of advising students to do their homework around the different modules available to them so thank you very, very much and congratulations on your job in Social Justice Ireland. So look, next up we have Associate Professor Aideen Quilty and she's going to talk to us about the MA in Gender Studies. So Aideen, I'm going to hand over to you. Thanks a million, Sarah. And hello, everybody. I'm just going to set this. So Sarah said, um, I'm Associate Professor in Gender Studies and Social Justice, and I'm Director of the program. And I'm going to talk about gender studies in relation to four questions, four questions that hopefully will help you as you think about the options available and help you make a really informed decision as to how best to spend um, your time next year um, as you pursue your educational opportunities. So a very obvious starting question, what is gender studies about? Well, one of the wonderful uh, differences and distinctions between studying at undergrad and graduate level is that it's about an opportunity to develop deep expert knowledge in a given area. So for us, that would be working with us around genders and sexualities, and that's thinking also about masculinity studies and trans studies. Um, and so how do we do that? And there are four key things that underpin how you would be learning with us, with staff in the Gender Studies program. Everybody who teaches onto the program adopts an intersectional approach. Um, and that means that we don't just see a gendered body, we see a gendered body that is also raced and classed and sexed and abled. And, and that's really important. And the other thing about that intersectional analysis is that it allows us to make visible uh, the structures that are at play and the power dynamics that are at play in creating the inequities that we really are committed to challenging. And the second thing that informs how it is we teach um, is that we are all informed by feminist or decolonial uh, praxis. And that's really important for how we do our own scholarship, but also how we set up the learning environments that you come into. Uh, it's very much about us working in partnership with our students in the classroom. Third thing about all of us on the program, all of my colleagues, we're all interdisciplinary scholars. So we are taking what is really interesting and important from education and philosophy and masculinity studies and history and social policy and bringing that to bear on asking critical questions about about gender and gender bodies in our contemporary world. And then finally, all of the staff are research active. So we are also teaching with and through the research projects that we're all involved in. And we're also conscious that as you go out there to work in a whole variety of arenas, you too will need to be confident in your ability to take on research projects, but also to be able to appraise and assess other research reports that you are engaging with. So we have a heavy emphasis on research methodologies and the program. So what will you study? Well, very simply, the, the course is divided into three sections. So you've got 30 credits of core modules, and that looks like three modules. And then you've got 30 credits of option modules that you choose from a range of between eight and 10 options. Um, and those options are offered from myself, my colleagues within the school, 
but also colleagues that we've developed really important relationships with across the university in sociology and politics and international relations and geography and law and, and other places. And then you do 30 credits on your research project. And to give you a sense of what those core modules would just be, for the academic year 24-25, you would be studying gender theory critical themes, um, gender global concepts and contexts, and then feminist and egalitarian research research methods. And then where are our graduates employed? Like other uh, colleagues who've spoken, um, we're really lucky in the school to be so well connected and respected as a school. And all of our programs then are an added or added value when you go into the workplace. Um, our graduates are in private sector and the tech sector, which is increasingly looking to expertise in gender and gender related uh, topics and um, to frame their own engagement with public sector. We also have um, graduates always going into the public sector. Um, obviously, the NGO, charity and not for profit sector is hugely important for our graduates and then research and think tanks, not just here in Ireland, but also across Europe. And then finally, how do you find out more? Um, the more time you can spend at this point thinking about what you want to study next year, the better it will be for you. So please go to our website, but also just reach out, contact us if you want to arrange a Zoom call or get any different additional information. Myself, Aidan Quilty, my email, or my colleague Dorota, who's head of subject, and we'd be happy to set up that Zoom call with you. Thank you. Okay, and again, thank you very much, Aidan. You know, really, really helpful insights into what is gender studies, the whole interdisciplinary nature, but also those evolving areas of career opportunities, particularly in relation to um, the tech industry, which I'm not sure ma many of our kind of prospective students would be aware of. So thank you. Um, so next we have um, Dr. Krishna Rueta Orwela, and Krishna is going to be talking to you about our MSc in Equality Studies. So, Krishna, I'll hand over to you. And again, your presentation is going to be complemented and followed by one of your current students, Maeve Harkin. Um, so we're looking forward to hearing from both of you. Thank you, Sarah, very much for that introduction. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, today, can you see this the slides? Yes. Yeah, we can. Okay. Yeah, I I am um, I'm pleased today to share about information regarding the Equality Studies Masters, which is at our school. And um, we, we, when we want to, we are inviting students who are interested in understanding the causes and impact of inequality, not only here in Ireland, for instance, or in a specific nation states, but also embracing a sort of a global perspective. This is why international students are um, widely invited to engage in these studies. Also, we do have a strong interdisciplinary approach in which we are interrogating inequalities, but uh, drawing on theories and methods from sociology, politics, economics, law, and anthropology. At the core of our understanding, we do have a multidimensional approach and intersectional uh, perspective in which we understand inequalities, not only in terms of class, but also in relationship with um, racial differences, gendered um, inequalities and oppression, sexuality and disability. So this is at, at this runs across all modules, this, this multidimensional inter intersectional approach. And one element that is, I would say is, that is distinctive or, or very important at, and is at the core of equality studies is are the students' commitment to activism and change. So the question, having that question of how can we create a more equal society would be in all of our modules, trying to find answers and possibilities and ways um, towards engaging in action. 
So what would you learn in our program? So what is this, what an equality study is about understanding inequalities and how they are deeply embedded in society. Try to find ways in which we can make change by understanding power relations, but not only as sociologists pro would probably do in a theoretical approach, but in order to support social justice projects or engage in, in projects involving or seeking social justice and transforming societies. So it is about challenging intersecting and epistemic oppressions in the ways in which all these oppressions are entangled and interconnected. And for us, it's very important to, to draw also on a decolonial approach, how we can question the knowledge that we are producing from a Western perspective, and how can we decolonize our research at the same time. And so from this, from a, a perspective of popular education, but also from an engaged um, form of, of pedagogies or in, embracing pedagogical approaches that are participative. And we do center our activities on students and that process of co-learning across teachers, lecturers, and students. And we do have a mentorship program that is very um, has been launched recently in which students are able to also engage in a process of co-learning with um, scholars and researchers and activists that are already working in the social justice sector. And so how are uh, the structure of our program is um, in, similar in the way that we have a one year option or two year part time, also a higher diploma, depending on on what point of entrance or what are your interests or what is your what are your expectations? Maybe you want to explore first, so you will might take a higher diploma or you would like to engage in the in the full year or part time if you're have a. a our working commitments. So we do have core modules that would be um, and required options that will sum a total of, of 90 credits and, um, and the master's research project. Our options are are available because we can we have a variety of, of options. So you can also tailor your program towards your own interest. Let's say you're interested in space, in global issues. So you might take options in geography or maybe also some options in gender studies or options in politics if you're more interested in governmentality or state structures or about or if you're interested in, chil in in children so there's a lot of varieties where you can tailor your own or and, and sort of design your own program in a way and the employment opportunities are very wide in the sense that um a lot of our um, graduates have um, gained uh, employment or have accessed the NGO sector, so working in housing, migration, issues regarding health, um, children, discrimination, anti-racism in the public sector, in um, state institutions, public planning, policy implementation, social movements community-based projects. A lot of students have also run their own uh, projects, international organizations involved uh, involving food security, climate change, anti-discrimination, peace building, and also the private sector in the equality and diversity units, or in sort of what is called decolonial design or uh, social design. And so if you have any other questions, uh, well, we also have our entry requirements would be that to be a lower second class honors or above, if you, you will have to have like a IL, ILTS of 6.5 or equivalent in English, if you're an international student or if English is not your first language. And if you have want to know more details, please contact myself here um, at, at Cristina Ruete Orihuela, um, at ucd.ie or Dominic Schellert, and we can answer any of your questions or schedule a, a meeting via Zoom. So thank you very much for your attention. I'm currently doing the MSc Inequality Studies. Um, so I was doing a undergrad uh, program last year. So this time last year, I was kind of in the same position as probably most, a couple of views, kind of, kind of trying to figure out what to do next, or even just trying to 
going to wade through all the options that are like the master programs that are available in Ireland or even internationally. So kind of what drew me to um, UCD was kind of uh, my undergrad was uh, kind of in human, it was in human development. So it kind of looked at a multiple ranges of like disciplines. And I really enjoyed looking at uh, kind of areas and topics through different interdiscipline lenses. And I kind of thought it was very reflected in the master's programs that were available um, within UC and within this school. So compared to other master programs in different universities, I kind of thought it, would, it wouldn't get too narrow and you would still be able to kind of uh, take on these kind of broader uh, lenses. So as kind of mentioned uh, throughout this seminar, there's an awful lot of support and um, a lot of the professors and um, associates are kind of just are really eager to help you if you have any questions or anything. And I, that's what stood out, like kind of made UCD stand out to me last year when I got inquired, they were, you know, the, our course director last year was really helpful and kind of providing with examples of reading lists or helping me kind of go through what would, what electives would suit me based on my um, interests and kind of interests into research as well. So, that student support was there from the offset and it's really continued throughout my time on the masters um there's never been like uh any i've always had uh, people to go to and all the our lectures are kind of really as uh krista mentioned like it's a kind of co-learning so it's really interactive and they're, everyone's quite uh, engaged which is i think really helpful when you're uh, kind of trying to navigate such um kind of big issues that we do kind of take on, like take on within our course. Um, another thing just to kind of uh, build on the idea of kind of co-learning and there's uh, how it can be kind of tailored towards your interests. Um, the electives, as previously mentioned, there's a, like a huge um, range of electives that you can uh, choose from. And then also even within our core uh, modules, a lot of the times the assignments are, there's a lot of kind of areas that you can kind of bring in your own specific interests. So there are lectures and kind of within the assignments, we've always encouraged us to bring in, draw areas that we're interested in or areas we want to kind of tackle. And then also kind of drawing on our own like learning and skills that we are bringing from our kind of um, journey before this master's. Also previously mentioned about the uh, mentor program. I think it's been a huge help for me as a student to kind of came straight in from undergrad and now I'm kind of facing the big bad world of kind of the workforce and I find it's kind of it's since there's no like a uh, specific job sitting waiting for you it kind of can get really daunting and intimidating because you just don't really know where to start so this we've got a point of contact now because we were set up with mentors and um, that have done the program before so now we kind of have these meetings and you can have this point of contact with someone who is in the workforce and they kind of Demystifies it, demystifies it a little bit, which I think is kind of common to me and a lot of my uh, kind of uh, colleagues as well, which has been great. Um, also kind of just quickly on the kind of the layout of our course, it's for our first two semesters, we've kind of only had about like six hours of class uh, time on campus. So kind of a lot of the work is done, uh, it, you know, it's independent work as well which um, kind of suits if you're trying to work part time or then also I know a few people who are kind of undertaking the course as, and in the part time option. So that's spread across two years. And I know that's helped a lot of people who are hoping to work um, as well, like continue working while uh, undergoing this master's. So um, just kind of I'll finish up on one of what my favorite part of the um, uh, master's has been is that kind of the class sizes. Our program is quite small. so. There's about 10 of us on this uh, program this year. And I just think it's been so insightful because classes are very discussion based. And while we have a lot of theoretical work, we're always kind of applying it to real world situations. But because this, um, our student body is quite like it's quite diverse, there's people like for, from international students as well. So we just I feel like it's great. We're learning. So we're hearing some so many perspectives and it's just been really insightful and kind of made me kind of it's I've learned a lot from the people I'm studying with as well as just the people that are kind of uh, are lecturing as well so I would really recommend and if anyone has any questions or anything just you know, yeah. okay
Okay, and look, thank you so much, Maeve, again, for sharing your, your own personal experience. And again, I think it's been really, really helpful to hear about firstly, what drew you to the Equality Studies course in UCD in terms of that breadth, that co-learning approach. I mean, it sounds for you like that mentorship program has been really, really supportive in terms of helping you to figure out your career options post completing your master's. Um, and again, you know, that approachability of, of staff in terms of supporting students on the programme. So thank you very much. So look, we're moving on to our last, but certainly not our least speaker, um, Associate Professor Naoko Dade, who's going to give us some insights and an overview of the M MSOC Science and Welfare and Justice. So over to you now. Thanks so much, Sarah. Um, hello, everybody. Um, I'm going to share my slides here. Um, so my name is Naoko Date, and I'm an Associate Professor in Social Policy and Social Robotics, and I'm the academic oops, coordinator of this program, a Master of Social Sciences, um, Welfare and Justice. Um, so this program is for everybody who's been listening and thinking this, like all the programs look, sound great, but I'm not sure um, which one should they, um, you should go for. Um, it's sort of a bit of a mixture, a bit of everything. Um, this program is um, the youngest of all, I think, because um, it, was, it was designed after um, two schools merged in 2016. And so it's the three subjects, social policy, social work, and social justice um, came together and deliver this. So, um, and recently we changed the name, the title. So it used to be um, MSOCSI, Social Work, Welfare and Justice, but um, it's, this is much simpler um, term. Basically, um, it's in recent years, the work environment for social work practitioners um, in the world, not just in Ireland, it's becoming um, quite globalized. So the, the main part of this program was, I mean, since the idea came from the fact that um, we want um, to deliver some program, um, program for practicing social workers, already qualified social workers outside of Ireland. Um, there has been a need um, for such a program um, and we decided to, this is a great moment to bring all the subjects and all the programs together and then um, deliver this. But we started to um, accept students um, from everywhere, Germany, US, Greece, and South Korea, China, and so on, who are actually not necessarily so, um, practicing social workers. Um, people, some, some of them um, actually have degrees, um, undergraduate degrees um, in literature. So they are interested in uh, welfare, justice, um, equality studies, gender studies, um, public policy, um, all these aspects. But also, but again, like they did not quite know uh, which is the um, couldn't find the best program, and that's what we are delivering. So it's a mixture of um, students um, who are interested in social work practice aspects, but also um, policy um, analysis. And um, clearly, the world needs um, critical um, thinking, critical analysis, and research skills. Even if you're actually working in a environment, different kinds of environments. So, in a nutshell, um, this probably just summarizes everything. It's like it's it's the modules um, for this program come from all four um, programs: Master of Public Policy, Professional Master of Social Work, um, and Master of Science um, in Quality Studies, Master of Science Gender Studies. And if you take a look at the, the brochure, um, you will see the kind of modules that you can take. Um, so some of the um, modules come from social work program and again from the other three um, programs as well, public policy. So it's a mixture, real mixture of um, um, subjects. And graduates, um, this is, as I said, it's like relatively new. Uh, most um, students who came um, went back and then pro get promoted um, within their organizations. Um, but some people stay um, in Ireland. So um, I, I guess in a sense, it's it's better sort of, it looks a very similar profile um, from the other programs in terms of the career opportunities. And it goes, I mean, everybody goes into very different um, directions afterwards. In terms of um, uh, applicant profile eligibility, um, you, again, you could look up the um, brochure, but um, the English um, is, is if you're listening from abroad and if your language, native language is not English, 
then um, you need to have IELTS 6.5 or other um, English um, proficiency, proficiency tests are also um, eligible. So you could check with me or um, Martina, um, Reedy, um, Senior manage, Program Manager, and these are the contact details. Um, so thank you very much for listening, and hopefully um, this would interest you to the program as well.